for this day. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you that you have gathered us here in your house. Yeah, to be in your presence. We thank you for the praises we have sung. And Lord, as we are going to share from your word, may you speak to us, Lord. May you touch our lives. May you touch our hearts. May you enable us to learn something today, Lord. And I pray, God, that you prepare our hearts that they may be receiving your word. And Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord. Amen. Yes, so we're having, we having a very interesting topic today. We're talking about spiritual warfare. We are talking about the battle of resistance. And as Christians, our life is interesting. Huh? There are different things we are going through. And as we have been reading today, we have an enemy. That's a fact. The Bible says that we have an enemy, which is the devil, which is Satan. So it is really important in the first place to accept that fact that we are having an enemy. We are not just there on our own. We have that enemy. But the good thing is, he is a defeated enemy. Amen? The victor is already there. And his name is Jesus. Amen? So... The thing is that the devil doesn't want us to succeed in our life. Like, he doesn't want us to thrive. He doesn't want us to prosper. So this is why he is against us. Because we belong to God. And the devil doesn't like anything which is from God. So this is why he is fighting us or trying to fight us. This is why we are in challenges. This is why we are under attack. And now today's scripture tells us that we should resist that enemy in faith. Amen? In, in verse 9 it says, resist him, firm in your faith. So that is our task. And that is what we want to look at together today. That aspect of resistance. Because we are all standing there in our battles. But it is important how we are standing in that battle, how we are resisting, and how we are standing there. And our today's text really brings out these aspects that we need, or what we need to do in order to resist the devil. And the first thing which it brings out is the aspect of humility. In verse 6 it says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God. So humility is one thing that we need to practice when we want to resist the devil. And I know humility doesn't sound very attractive. Like being humble, what? We think like, ah, you have to behave very what? But we shall look at humility, what it means. And the opposite of humility is pride. Pride is the opposite of humility. And I think pride is a very common thing in the life of every person. We are all having pride in the one or the other way. Hmm? Even me. I'm not excluding myself. To be proud means we are exalting ourselves. We are thinking about ourselves in an inappropriate way. That means like higher than we should think. That means you will like look down on others. To be proud means we will maybe despise other people. We will be arrogant. All this is to be pride, proud. And I think every one of us is having these moments hmm? where we are thinking, ah, for me, I'm the best. For me, this is <clears throat> like me, I'm the one, I can do everything. Like, there are those thoughts. Uh -huh. It is not nice to admit that we are having them, but we are having them when we are honest. And actually, when we are proud, that means we are not glorifying God. Because to be proud is Satan's 
genuine nature. Pride is Satan's nature because Satan is a fallen angel. We can read in Isaiah 14 about his fall and he fell because he was exalting himself. Because he wanted to be higher and better than anyone, even better than God. And this is why he fell, because he rebelled against God in that way. So it means when we are proud, we are making room for Satan. We are not glorifying God. And our actions, they can either glorify God or glorify Satan. There is no gray zone in between. Huh? Like, we cannot be like, ah, a bit God, a bit the other side, a bit what? No. We can either be on God's side or on the other side. There's a decision that we have to make. So it's either black or white. There is no gray in between. And when we talk of pride, it will always start in our thoughts and then later come down to our actions. Like when I think bad about someone, about that fellow student there of mine, when I'm despising him or her, maybe it will be first in my thoughts, I will think like, ah, banang, that person. Mm -mm -mm. And then, at some point, it might come down to my actions. That means maybe I will speak not friendly to that fellow student. Hmm? I know we know those things. Even me, I know them. So, we have now seen it is not good to be proud. That will make us fall in the battle. So, we cannot stand in the battle when we are proud. So, what do we have to do instead? We have to practice humility. Amen? And, as I said, it starts in our thoughts. And it matters how do we think about ourselves, about God, about others. And when we look at Ephesians 6, the armor of God, I can't go there at large because of time, but there is one element that we are getting, and that's the helmet of salvation. Amen? So where do you put a helmet? You put it where? On, on, your, on, on your foot? No. We put it on the head. And with, with our head, what is inside there? The brain. Hmm? And with the brain, we are thinking. So, when we put on the helmet of salvation on our head, that means we have to think in line with salvation. Think as a saved person. Amen? Because pride comes through the wrong attitude towards God and ourselves. So that means we have to have the correct attitude towards God, towards our fellows, and even about ourselves. Like, how do you really see the people around you? Are you aware that each one of us, even the person you don't like, is wonderfully created by God? has a purpose, has a destiny, has gifts and talents, even when we think they're not having them. Hmm? So it needs that change of mind. We need to think in that way how we should think. And even towards God. Because when we are proud, we are seeing ourselves like better than God, better than anyone. Hmm? So we need to fear God. We need to pay the due respect to him and also acknowledge that it is him fighting the battle and not us. Because when we say, okay, me, I am here, I am fighting the battle, it is my thing. No, that is proud. We need, actually it was said even by the person who came for the intercession. We need to depend on God. We need to give him that space, amen? Because then he will come and fight for us, but we should not stand in his way. So if you find yourself having proud thoughts, repent. Repent immediately, because the problem is with pride, it will actually lead us to destruction. 
It will make us fall in the battle. It will make us to not walk in line with God's will. So we need to really, yeah, align our minds with the word of God, with the will of God, with how he sees us and others so that we can stand. Amen? Yes. So accept what the word of God says about you because that's true humility to think what the word of God says about you. Okay, that was point number one. Let me go to point number two. Hallelujah. The point number two I'm getting from verse seven, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Hallelujah. We have a God who cares for us. Isn't that wonderful? Hmm? So, it tells us to cast all our fear on God. And, by the way, fear is a very, like, a, a, a much-liked weapon of Satan in our lives. There are so many things we can fear, actually. It could be, like, the next exam. It could be other people. It could be that we may be fall sick. It could be that we are running out of money. Like there are so many things we could fear and it would be very easy to just dwell in fear completely because you will, like, you will always find something you can fear. Even the devil will, like, he, he brings you something to fear. You fear and he brings you the next thing and then ah, he adds you another one and another one so that he always keeps you busy fearing. Huh? Like, there are so many things. And the problem is, when we fear, we are not on God's side. Because when you are fearing, you are not trusting God in that moment. Then you are saying, like, or you are making God actually small. Because you are lifting that problem above God. Hmm? Or when you are worried about something. And this is why God is so, 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 so keen about fear in his word. Amen? I believe we are all reading our Bible, do we? Hmm? And there are very many times where God says, fear not. Amen? Fear not. In the Old Testament, in the New Testament, so God is very keen about fear. And let me tell you, with fear, we cannot stand in the battle. Because as I said, fear is a weapon of Satan. As long as we fear that enemy or that thing or that situation, we cannot stand. Because we will fall, because we will be there caught in fear, we are not free, so we should really not fear. Because it will only like circle around the problem the whole time. Hmm? But we need to not circle around the problem, but about God. Because it's him who fights our battles. So, how, like what do we do instead of fearing? Hmm? We should not fear, but believe and be confident. And there's every reason to be confident. We have even sung it here today in our praises and worship. By the way, let me, let me say this. Worship team, you're doing an amazing job. I'm also a worship leader and a pianist. Where are the pianists? Pianists? <laughs> yes. Praise and worship, it's such a wonderful thing, and I'm so passionate about it. Okay, back to the topic. Actually, we should believe. Huh? We should be confident. We should really cast that care, that fear, that worry on God and leave it also there. Because we can be there praying, oh God, I'm, I'm, I'm casting all my anxieties on you. And then the next moment, we are like, ah, but actually, let me, let me, let, let, let me get it back. Let me, let me get it back. I think I'm going to still handle the situation. I'm still going to be in fear a bit. Psst. No. That's not what we are supposed to do. 
We are supposed to really cast our fears on God and leave them there. And let him handle the situation. Amen? And that means for us, we should look on God and not on the circumstances. And it also comes down to how do we speak about the situation. Are you proclaiming God's victory? Or are you speaking words of fear? Are you going to your friends, ah, me, I don't know how this is going to be. I don't know what is going to happen. I don't know what. Like, how are you speaking about your situation? It matters. Our words have power. We should not undermine our own words. So we should also speak in faith. Amen? Amen. Speak the word of God over the situation. Proclaim God's victory. God, I thank you that this situation is not too hard for you. I thank you that you will make a way through. I thank you that you will bring that person to you. Like, whatever it may be, speak about the situation in faith. And don't allow the fear to be in you, to rule over you. Stand firm and believe. Amen? My last point, I'm getting from verse 8. That's the watchfulness. Watchfulness. Verse 8 says, be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. So, the Bible tells us here to be watchful, to be on guard. Hmm? Because it says like, you know, like the, the, the enemy is like prowling around all the way, looking for someone to devour. And... I think being watchful is also something very important because the opposite of being watchful is like being unobservant, being sleepy, being too busy with other things. And that's the state that the enemy wants us to be in. To be spiritually sleepy, to be there, bothering only about our own things, not about God things, but just our own, our pleasure, our... I don't know, many things in our lives. Like we can get so entangled in that daily business actually. And when we are in that state, the devil is happy. Because when we are unaware, he can come and catch us. So we will be an easy prey for him. So we have to be on the watch, amen? Second Timothy 2 verse 4 says, Second Timothy 2 verse 4, No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. So it takes you the picture of a soldier who, like, when a soldier goes for war, the soldier is only concentrating on the war. He is busy, like, fulfilling the commands of his commander hmm? and he's not like busying himself with other um, affairs like the normal civil life he has left that behind and he is fully concentrating on the military affairs and that is what we should do we should really concentrate on our battle affairs about on our commander, who is God, amen? And the thing is with the enemy, that he wants us really to be that occupied, that busy, like distracted with different things so that we are no longer on the watch. And the point is, um, the scripture I've just read talks about, um, like, about who, who are we pleasing. The soldier pleases the one who enlisted him, or he seeks to do so. And the question is, whom are we trying to please? Whom are you trying to please? Whose expectations are you trying to fulfill? The one of people? Or the one of God? 
Paul writes in Galatians 1, If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. So that means when we are trying to fulfill everyone's expectations, being busy running to please people, we are not glorifying God. We will not be a good soldier because we are distracted. So there are so many expectations that come to us from our friends, our teachers, our relatives, different kinds of other people, maybe even from the media, mm, you are busy, like presenting yourself in a nice way on these different channels. Like, there are those expectations which are there. But we should, like, we are not living on earth to fulfill people's expectations. We are on earth to fulfill God's expectations. Amen? And he wants you to be an alert and sober-minded Christian. Amen? And it is really important that we really make the best use of our time. And that each day we set really aside the time to listen from God. I believe for every soldier there is a time where the commander comes and then instructs the soldiers, okay, today there is this enemy we are facing, we are going about it like this and like this and like this and like this. So there is that instruction that the soldier receives from a commander. Are you receiving God's instructions every morning? Are you hearing what he says? Do you know each day how he wants you to be? With whom? What you should do? Even Jesus, he took that time. By the way, Jesus, <laughs> that man, he could have been also very busy the whole time. Like, running there, healing everyone, preaching here, preaching there, like you read in the Gospels, like the people are coming, they want him to preach, they want him to heal, they want him to do what? So he could have like spent his entire time just running from one to the next. But what did he do? He set aside time. Hmm? He went up on a mountain or somewhere else where no one could find him and then he would pray. He would have the time with his father and pray and receive instruction from God. And I think that's something we should really do. Amen? By the way, I took it off recent. Okay, Mia had a chance to take a weekend. I went from Friday to Saturday just to some place there in Entebbent. I really took the time. I'm like, I was like, God, I am here for you. Speak to me. And God was really giving me what I should be focusing on. And it really helped me. Like, I think since that time, I'm really like, I'm refocused, refreshed. And I'm not saying, telling you to always take a weekend. It can even be half an hour. It can even be an hour. But we should set aside the time to receive the instructions of our commander in order to stand in battle. Especially in times like this where we are living, yeah, and where many things are changing even around the world, and I think that's even more important right now, and therefore we really need to seek his guidance. As I conclude, I want to say that really standing in that area of resistance, it's a continuous thing. It's not a one-day thing. So the devil is a continuous enemy, the challenges are maybe continuous, so we also need to be continuously resisting. This is why the watchfulness is very important. So we should practice humility. We should not fear. We should be watchful, and then we will really stand on the side of God, and we will really stand in the battle. And... It might not happen always on that big spectacular basis where you have this big whatever. No, it happens actually on the daily unspectacular basis. Even in your classroom, 
in the way you think about a person. It happens maybe when you're in the evening in your bed and fear wants to come. It happens maybe when you are somewhere and then, yeah, on media you see certain things and you feel under pressure. It happens on that daily basis. So it is good to always, yeah, be aware of that so that we can stand. Let us pray. Lord Father, we thank you so much for this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the instruction that you are giving us. We thank you that you are the one fighting our battles. We thank you that you are stronger than the enemy. And Lord, I want to now pray for really everyone in this room this morning that you are really with them, God, that you are really guiding them. I want to pray, Father, that you really everyone here may go back and really reflect even on a relationship with you, God. Set time aside to really spend it with you so that you can show them really the points of focus in their life. I want to ask you that you help all of us to be humble, to be not worried, to be not fearing, and that we may be alert and looking out for you. We thank you so much, Lord. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.